If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to the channel. And if you're enjoying these stories, there's a link to buy me a coffee below. This is the Hasidic Story Project with Barack Holman, podcasting from Jerusalem, Israel. This podcast is sponsored by listeners just like you. To become a supporter of this podcast, please go to HasidicStory.com. H-A-S-I-D-I-C Story.com. You'll never know. You'll never know. You'll never know. You'll never know. This week's episode is sponsored in honor of the birthday of Ruth Fredel Hay. May she grow up le Torah, le chupa le maasim tovim. There was a chassid who was a devoted follower of the Rebbe, the Magid of Mezrich, who of course was the successor to the Holy Baal Shem Tov. And this chassid was very poor. His whole life he'd been poor. And even though he was intelligent and honest and kind and caring, his poverty ruined his chances for finding a shidduch. Every time he would meet a woman, she would look at him and say no. Or if the parents of the future Kala saw him before their daughter met him, they would immediately turn him down. And so after davening and not seeing any success, he turns to his Rebbe, the Magid of Mezrich, and he says, please, Rebbe, give me a bracha to get married. You know, I'm a good person. I learn Torah. I help people. But every time people see me, they turn me down because of my poverty. And the Rebbe says to him, my advice to you is the first offer that you get, you accept it right away. Now, to a normal person, they would have a very hard time just marrying the first person that wants to marry him. But this was a chassid, and he'd already tried everything he could. And he said to himself, if the Rebbe tells me to marry the first woman that I meet that wants to marry me, then I don't care who it is. I will have complete faith in the true tzaddik and do as he says. And so he was making his way back home. And of course, not having any money, he was simply walking on the road. And as the sun started to set, there were no street lights, there were no flashlights. And so people had no choice but to spend the night somewhere. This chassid came into a small town where there was a little tavern and an inn. And since he had no money, he was allowed to sleep under one of the tables in the corner and didn't get a room. And so he lays down under the table, <sighs> trying to get comfortable and fall asleep. But there was too much noise in the tavern. It happened to be there were a bunch of drunk guys who were gambling and joking around. And they happened to be Jewish as well. And they see this chassid sitting under the table trying to fall asleep. <sighs> they go over to him and they say, hey, you want to join us? And he says to them, join you for what? And they said, we're about to have a wedding. You want to join us? So he says, yeah, sure, Mazel tov. A wedding? How nice. But where's the bride and groom? And so these guys started laughing and slapping each other on the shoulder. <laughs> and they said, you're the groom. And the bride, she's right over there. And they start laughing. And they point over to the innkeeper's daughter, who had been serving them alcohol all night. And everyone thought it was the funniest thing. And one of the guys in the crowd, he says to the chassid, stay right here. I'm going to go get you your kala. And so two of them went into the kitchen. A couple of minutes later, they show up with this young woman who was drying her hands from washing some dishes and laughing just like these guys were. And they said, here comes the bride. And then just to have fun, they took a tablecloth. Four guys held it and they said, this is the chuppah. They said, come on, bring some wine. They bring wine and a kiddush cup and they write a ketubah. And two witnesses sign the ketubah and they're laughing and they're dancing and they're holding the ketubah in the air and dancing around with the ketubah, and the chatan, and the kala, and they start doing the wedding ceremony. And one guy turns to his friend, and he says, hey, you have the wedding ring? He said, wedding ring? I don't know, I've got this wooden ring on my pinky. Will that work? They say, is it worth more than a pruta? And everyone says, yeah. So they give it to the chatan, who gives it to his pseudo kala, and everyone starts laughing some more, and they're drinking some more. And he says, hareyat mekudeshedli, and everyone shouts, Mazel Tov and Mazel Tov. And then they do the Sheva Brachot. And then they said, listen, we got to give the bride and groom some gifts. And now the Hasid was taking this very seriously. But the innkeeper's daughter thought it was a big joke. And all of the drunk Jewish guests thought it was a big joke. 
They said, come, let's give him some presents. And they brought out some herring and they dumped it on the Chatan's head. And then they started throwing pickles at him and pouring water down his shirt and kicking him in the pants. And they were laughing and throwing him around. And then they got tired. And everyone, including the bride, went to go to sleep. The chassid goes and lays down under the table. And the next morning, when everyone got up, the innkeeper had returned. And he sees this huge mess from the night before. And he says, what, what's going on here? What is this mess? What did you do here? And a few of the drunk guys wake up with a headache, of course. And they say, ah, oh, we were just making fun. We're having a wedding. And the innkeeper says, really, who was the bride? And he kind of had a feeling that they recruited his daughter. And he said, oh, you know, the girl who was taking care of the tavern last night, she stood in as the bride. And now this innkeeper wasn't just an innkeeper and a tavern owner. He owned a great deal of property and was very wealthy. And he looks at this chassid sleeping under the table. And he looks at the drunk guys. And he says, tell me what happened. They show him the ketubah. They said, we said, Sheva Brachot, the blessings under the chuppah. We had witnesses. He gave her a ring. And the innkeeper realizes his daughter had been married off to this chassid sleeping under the table, covered in herring and pickles. And he goes and calls his daughter out and he says, what were you doing? And she laughs and she said, you know, Tati, it was just a joke. We didn't really get married. He said, you didn't get married. What's that ring you have on your finger? She said, oh, it's a little piece of wood. It's not a wedding ring. Come on. And do you think I would marry that schlepper under the table there? He said, where's the ketubah? They show him the ketubah. He says, you are married. You had witnesses. He gave you a ring. You're married. He says, what am I going to do now? You think I want to do to marry this schlepper under the table here? In the meantime, the chassid is quite happy. He got married, just like the Rebbe had promised him. And he's about to tear up the ketubah. And then he realizes it wouldn't matter. Kicking him out and tearing up the ketubah wouldn't do anything. Because technically she's still married to him. The only thing that would annul it is a divorce, a get. So now the innkeeper becomes nice. And he goes over to the chassid and he says, come here. Come out under the table. Let me clean you up. Go take a bath and change your clothes. And then we'll talk. And the chassid goes and cleans himself up. Puts on new clothes. He hadn't had new clothes in years. Already he was feeling better. The innkeeper says, listen, why don't I give you a hundred rubles, which was the equivalent of what this chassid would make in two years. And he spreads the hundred rubles on the table in cash. He says, I'll give you these hundred rubles after you sign a get and divorce my daughter. But the chassid said no. And so the innkeeper says, it's okay. I'm a businessman. I understand how negotiations work. I'll give you a thousand rubles. A thousand rubles. It's 10 years of wages for you. And the chassid said, the only way I'll divorce your daughter is if my Rebbe, the Magid Mezrich, tells me to do so. And the innkeeper says, okay, let's go. And they get in this fancy carriage, him, his daughter, and the chassid, and they go to the Magid Mezrich. And as soon as the wealthy innkeeper sees the great tzaddik, he was blown away by the Kedusha, by the holiness. He'd never seen anything like it in his life. He understood for the first time what it meant when it says in the Torah that beams of light were coming out of the face of Moshe Rabbeinu. Here beams of light were coming out of the tzaddik, the Magid Mezrich. And the innkeeper says, listen, your chassid came to my inn. I was away for the night. There were a bunch of drunk guys and my daughter played along and so-called married your chassid. But it turns out that they actually did a wedding ceremony with witnesses and a ketubah and a ring and even Sheva Brachot. And this is not the person that I want my daughter to be married to. And I've already offered him a thousand rubles and he won't write a divorce for her. So please, Rebbe, speak with your chassid. Because he said the only way that he'll divorce my daughter is if you tell him to do so. And the Magid says to the wealthy Jew, the only way that you can nullify this marriage so that your daughter won't be marked as a divorcee and be able to marry a new husband is to give her present husband 10,000 rubles. And once that's done, he'll write the get and I will personally find the perfect match for your daughter. And the innkeeper says 10,000 rubles. Rebbe, that's an absolute fortune. And the Rebbe said, I know, you can afford to part with it. And for you, it's not a fortune. And then I promise you right away, I will find you your daughter's husband. And so the wealthy Jew is sweating from the stress, he wipes his forehead with a handkerchief, 
And he says, okay, I have a thousand rubles with me here. And he puts it on the table. And he said, I'll write a note promising to pay the rest in cash once my daughter receives her get. And the Magid turns to his gabai, to his assistant. And he says, bring a sofer, bring a scribe, and we'll write the get. The scribe comes in, and within an hour, the innkeeper's daughter is holding a document that says she's divorced. And the chassid is holding a thousand rubles and a note for 9,000 more. And now he's wealthy beyond his wildest dreams. And he's looking at the Magid and he's saying to himself, what do I do now? And the father of the daughter, the innkeeper, he says to the Magid, okay, Rebbe, you promised me that once I pay this money, right away you're going to find the Chatan for my daughter. So go on, Rebbe, where is he? And the Magid says he's here in the room. The innkeeper says, what are you talking about? All I see is this schlepper who has my 10,000 rubles. And the Magid said, yes, take a look at him. And the innkeeper looks at the schlepper, who is now dressed in new clothes, cleaned up, a thousand rubles in his pocket, and nine thousand more promised to him, and he looked like a different man. He stood up straight. His face had changed. He had a sense of purpose and self-confidence that he'd never had in his life. And the innkeeper says to the Magid, I don't understand what happened here. Your chassid looks like a different man. And the Magid says, yes, he's the same person, but he was lacking clothes and money and confidence. And had you been able to see that before I made you go through this whole ordeal, he could have married your daughter without changing his clothes and without having some pieces of paper in his pocket. But because you couldn't see it, Shem had to arrange that through divine intervention, he would marry your daughter and you would turn him around so that you could see him for who he truly was, a really good, sweet guy who was just looking to get married and start a family. And now that he has the confidence that you gave him, I'm telling you that in heaven, he is the match for your daughter. And with that, the wealthy innkeeper made another wedding. This time he made sure that his son-in-law got a beautiful ring for his daughter. And he had a big party and invited everyone, including those crazy drunks that married off his daughter just for fun. You see, my sweetest friends, it's not easy to have faith in the tzaddik. But if you have a tzaddik like the Magid of Mezrich telling you what to do, your job is just to have emuna, just to have faith in what he says. And you can have that same faith. Each person in their own situation sometimes knows what they need to do, but they just lack the confidence to do it. Especially when it comes to Torah and mitzvot. May Hashem bless us all. That when we need to be humble, we're humble. And when we need to be rich, we're rich. And when we need to be both, we're both as well. I have one more story for you. In a small town in Russia, there was a simple storekeeper whose name was Rebbe Sile, and he was a chassid of the Tzemach Tzedek, the third Lubavitcher Rebbe. And once when he went to visit Lubavitch to hear the Rebbe, the Rebbe explained how our father, Avraham Avinu, Abraham our father, gave money and time and helped people spiritually and physically. And the Rebbe explained that Avraham Avinu's works of charity and physical acts in this world were really just channeling the spiritual energy coming down from above. And even though Rebbe Sile didn't understand everything the Rebbe was saying, he tried to repeat word for word what the Rebbe had said, so that when he came home and the Hasidim gathered around and gave a reception for anybody who had gone to Lubavitch and met the Rebbe, he would be able to say what the Rebbe said. And sure enough, he comes back. And they said to him, Yisrael, tell us, what did the Rebbe say? And he said, I don't remember. I remember a few words the Rebbe said, something about Avraham Avinu giving tzedakah and helping people. And there were two other storekeepers in that town. Their names were Shmerel and Velvel, and they were also storekeepers, and they were friends of Rebbe Yisrael. And one day, Yisrael comes into Shmerel's store, and he says to him, would you be willing to lend me a small amount of money? Now, Israel didn't really need the money, but he remembered that the Rebbe said that one of the acts of kindness that a person can do is lend money without interest. And since he wanted to give his friend Shmerl the opportunity of doing this mitzvah, he borrowed a small amount of money. 
And then Schmerl, hearing this, went to his friend Velvel, and he also borrowed a small amount of money. And then a few days later, Yisrael paid back Schmerl, and Schmerl paid back Velvel, and they kept borrowing from one another and paying back in order to do the mitzvah of lending money without interest. And the next time Yisrael came to Lubavitch, the Tzemach Tzedek said to one of his assistants, Please go over and ask that chassid over there what's going on in his life. Now, there were famous chassidim in the Bavitch, but this Yisrael was not amongst them. And when the assistant to the Rebbe comes over to Yisrael and says to him, the Rebbe wants to know a little bit about what's going on in your life, Yisrael was really surprised. How could the Rebbe even know what was going on with him? And Yisrael said, I don't know what the Rebbe wants. I don't know what's going on in my life. So the Temach Tzedek says to his assistant, Tell Yisrael to come to my office. And when he comes in, the Rebbe says to him, Tell me, what do you do in the morning? Give me your daily schedule. He said, I get up at five in the morning. <sighs> I say some Tehillim. I drink a little coffee. <sighs> chop some wood. Go to Shul and Davin. Study a little bit. Eat my breakfast. Go buy the merchandise. and Bring it back to my store. And then in the afternoon, I Davin. Study a little more, down in the evening, and I go home. And the Rebbe says, it's very nice. But what do you do about giving tzedakah, about charity? And Yisrael says, Rebbe, I'm very poor. I don't have much money. And I can't really afford to give tzedakah. And the Rebbe said, but Yisrael, I'm seeing something in your face, on your forehead. I'm seeing some type of light coming out of you. Please tell me what else you do. And then Yisrael said, oh, Rebbe. You're probably talking about the loans that I take and return every few days. The Rebbe said, tell me about that. He said, I came here last time, and the Rebbe talked about the charitable acts of Avram Avinu, and I figured I can't afford to give tzedakah, but I can afford to borrow some money from my friend, and every few days I borrow it, and I pay it back, and I give him the schut, the merit of lending me money interest-free. And the Rebbe was satisfied with his answer. And he blesses Yisrael with lots of success and sends him on his way. And one of the Rebbe's sons, Reb Shmuel, who would eventually become a Rebbe himself, he says to his father, What is it that you saw in the face and on the forehead of that simple Jew, the storekeeper? And the Rebbe said, I saw a pillar of light surrounding him that was on the level of Avraham Avinu himself. He was drawing down from Hashem's storehouses of kindness and love for his fellow Jews. And it's very rare to see that on a tzaddik, all the more so a simple innkeeper. And so I needed to find out what he was doing so that Hashem gave him that light. Thank you so much for listening. As always, my sweetest friends, I want to thank the Kimmel family for once again sponsoring an episode, this time in honor of Ruth Fradel Hay on her birthday. Mazel May you and your family be blessed with only revealed good. And thank you to all the supporters and Reb Mayer, who also sent in a contribution. 
and the people that have been sending in money through Coffee, which there's a link if you'd like to buy me a coffee. There's a link in the podcast description or below. And of course, this week is Rosh Chodesh Elul. A mom is trembling. Tishrei is coming. Even Elul, I don't have the vessels to handle Elul. Be'ezrat Hashem. We should come into this new year, Basimcha, with health, and be blessed with only revealed good. Amen. 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 Amen, brother. Thank you, my sweetest friends. Have a beautiful week and a beautiful Shabbos and a beautiful Chodesh. Zeigesund.